Where are some of the weirdest and most interesting ways cash is found? Let's get right into it, starting with... Number 5. Heavy Bags In June 2020, the Metropolitan Police in London accidentally stumbled upon the motherload of dirty cash. 5.1 million pounds stuffed under beds and cupboards and just casually dumped on the floor of a Fulham flat in the UK. The money launderers behind the stash were so flustered by lockdown restrictions that they didn't know what to do with all the cash, so they just left it lying around like a bunch of lazy bums. We would have made a cool fort or something. You don't get many opportunities in life to make a money fort. The money was found when undercover officers spotted Ruslan Shamsutinov, 36, struggling to put heavy bags into a car outside the luxury Porteous apartments. The bags contained cash linked to Sergis Ausens, a Russian middleman working for gun and drug syndicates across London. When the police raided the flat, they found stacks of cash everywhere they looked, under the beds and cupboards and on the floor. It was like they were raiding the house of some wealthy old lady who doesn't trust banks because they're all crooks. The money laundering hub was being used by at least 10 different criminal gangs and they were all unable to clean their dirty money due to the lockdown restrictions. In total, the police seized 5 million and 82,000 pounds along with 39,000 euro and 8,000 pounds that were discovered at Shemshudanov's home in Hackney. Five weeks later, the police observed another accomplice, Sirwin Ahmadi, handing over a bag of cash to a fourth suspect in North London. Within hours, Ahmadi was arrested along with 59,980 pounds and a search of his home in Pycroft Way uncovered an additional 198,600 pounds. The following day, Ausens was detained at his house in Rochester, where the police found another 14,435 pounds, bringing the total to nearly 5.4 million pounds. The three money launderers, Shemshudinov, Ausens, and Amadi, were jailed and sentenced for their crimes. Shemshudinov was jailed for three years and nine months. Ausens was sentenced to three years and four months, and Amadi received a suspended sentence after pleading guilty to conspiracy to conceal and disguise criminal property. The seized cash will eventually be used to fund operations by the Metropolitan Police and the Home Office to tackle violent crime. Number four, another man's trash. It was a typical Saturday afternoon for the Shantz family as they went for a leisurely drive through the streets of Caroline County. Little did they know, their day was about to take a wild turn. As they were driving down Broad Street, they noticed the car in front of them swerving around an object in the road. Without time to react, Mrs. Shantz hit the object, which turned out to be a bag. The family, thinking it was just some trash that had been left on the side of the road and being generally good people, pulled over to collect the bag so it could be disposed of properly. But fate had other plans for the Shantz family. As they were driving, they spotted another bag on the side of the road, just 15 feet away from the first one. Mrs. Shantz, reflexes on high alert this time, stopped the car and picked up the second bag. Little did the Shantz family know, but they had just stumbled upon almost $1 million in cold, hard cash. After making this shocking discovery, the Shantz family called the Caroline deputies to report their findings. The deputies arrived on the scene and determined that the bags of money had likely belonged to the Postal Service and were intended for a bank. But how they ended up on the side of the road remains a mystery. Despite the temptation to keep the money for themselves, the Shantz family did the right thing and returned the money to the authorities. They probably had seen enough movies to know that keeping bags of money found on the side of the road never works out. Major Scott Moser paid the family a visit on Monday to thank them for their honor. Honesty. In repayment for giving back almost a million dollars, he put his police lights on for their two sons. We're sure the kids were polite enough to hide their disappointment. The Shantz family may not have gotten to keep the bags of money, but they can rest easy knowing that they did the right thing. And who knows, maybe they'll get a nice reward for their good deed. Also, they don't need to worry about Anton Chigar. Number three, forever money. 
Meet Archie Cabello, the black sheep of the Cabello family and a career criminal. Born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, Cabello always had a penchant for getting into trouble. In 1995, Archie Cabello was living a quiet life in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, working as an armed courier who delivered money to banks and businesses all over town. But little did anyone know, he had a plan that would change his family's life forever. Using his wife and son as accomplices, Cabello stole nearly $4 million from 1995 to 2005. It was a crime that left authorities in two states scratching their heads for over a decade. But because nothing comes between Uncle Sam and his cut, the IRS got involved. They discovered a suspicious paper trail leading to Cabello's son, Vincent, who ended up confessing. In 1995, at the age of 48, Cabello was working for an armed delivery services company when he decided to plan another robbery. He was working with two other couriers, one of whom had only been on the job for a week, while the other had only been there for two weeks. As the veteran, Cabello was afforded the leeway to do sketchy things and not be questioned by the rookie. For several days leading up to the robbery, Cabello and his wife practiced their routine. She would leave her job at a local cafe, seemingly on a lunch break, and drive around town. When she saw Cabello's armored truck drive by, she would park the car and wait for him to make a stop at a bank. On the day of the robbery, Cabello hit the hazard lights on the truck and his wife followed him to the strip mall where he was scheduled to make a stop at a bank. He signed for a bag containing about $157,000 and then pulled the truck around to the back of the bank where his wife was waiting in her car. He tossed the bag into her open window and they both drove off. When his bosses asked Cabello what happened to the money, he claimed he didn't know. The other two couriers who had no idea about the robbery also said they didn't know what happened. Cabello was fired and the Milwaukee police and the FBI investigated the incident. They were unable to find any suspects or stolen money. Two years after the first robbery, Cabello's son Vincent was honorably discharged from the U.S. Army after serving as a paratrooper. His father then roped him into committing a second heist. Vincent had gotten a job at a security corporation in the Milwaukee area, guarding the night vault in the basement of a commercial building. Vincent worshipped his father and felt trapped into going along with the robbery plan. Cabello showed up wearing a bushy beard, a backwards baseball hat, and yellow tinted sunglasses armed with a BB gun. Vincent had closed the vault door, but purposely didn't spin the dial to lock it. After Cabello entered the building, the father and son team put on a big performance for the security cameras. Cabello pretended to be a robber and yelled, freeze, while Vincent complied, seemingly unaware of the plan. Cabello handcuffed his son and went into the vault, stealing $730,000. The detective questioning Vincent, Ron Laura, became suspicious of Vincent's lack of reaction to the robbery and began to think it might have been an inside job. But without any probable cause, he was unable to make an arrest. A year after the second Milwaukee heist, the Cabello family moved to Portland, Oregon. By 1999, he had moved 21 times in four years, always staying in rented houses and apartments to avoid suspicion. But their money was about to run dry, and by 2005, Archie had a good financial plan. The plan was mainly stealing more money, but it was still a plan. Archie had been working for another armored delivery services company in Portland for about 10 months when he faked another armed robbery. He claimed that a gunman had approached his truck and forced him to drive to a nearby church, where he was found handcuffed to the door by a passerby. Over $7 million was on the truck that day, and two shrink wrap bricks containing $1.5 million each in $100 bills were missing. Authorities were suspicious of Cabello's story from the start. They noted that the truck was designed to withstand pistol rounds, so it was unlikely that a gunman could have forced Cabello to open the door. Four days after the supposed robbery, the FBI searched Cabello's home and found more than 100 credit cards and 620 money order receipts, but no stolen cash. An investigation revealed that the Cabellos had spent over a quarter million dollars on the credit cards, despite Archie earning only $44,000 in legitimate income in the four years following the robbery. Unfortunately for the Cabellos, the IRS became involved with the investigation and discovered a suspicious paper trail. The Cabellos had used the stolen money to buy several properties properties in the Portland area. The IRS was able to connect the properties to the Cabellos and their involvement in the robberies. In the annals of criminal history, there are many tales of elaborate heists and clever schemes that have been brought down by simple mistakes, such as the case of the Cabello crime empire, which was brought crashing down by one fateful Hummer purchase. Vincent Cabello, loyal son and accomplice to his father's criminal activities, made the mistake of purchasing a Hummer in cash, which was the last bit of evidence the IRS needed. The Cabellos were arrested arrested and charged with theft and conspiracy. In a stroke of pure bad luck for the Cabello family, they were arrested just four days before
before the statute of limitations expired on their criminal activities. But it wasn't just their poor timing that led to their downfall. It turns out that Vincent, the loyal son who had helped his father pull off two heists, had turned snitch. It was never really clear why Vincent ratted on his own father, but the investigators held the belief that many years of guilt were weighing him down. The weight only a Hummer could have supported. The Cabellos were brought to trial and sentenced in 2013. Despite the overwhelming evidence against them, Archie Cabello decided to act as his own attorney, believing he could outsmart the prosecution and the judge. But things didn't go as planned for Cabello. His lack of legal knowledge and experience proved to be a major hindrance, and he struggled to present a coherent defense. The prosecution, on the other hand, was able to paint a clear and damning picture of the Cabello family's involvement in the robberies. In the end, the jury found the Cabellos guilty on all counts after only a few hours deliberation. Archie Cabello was sentenced to 20 years in prison. His wife Marion received a measly 15-month sentence, and poor Vincent, who had cooperated with the authorities and provided key information in the investigation, was sentenced to 15 months in prison as well. It was a harsh lesson for the family and a reminder that acting as your own attorney isn't always the best idea. Crime may pay in the short term, but it's never a good idea to mess with the IRS. Number two, scammers gone a scam. Justin Colley is a plumber in Houston, Texas, and he made a shocking discovery while working on a bathroom at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church. He stumbled upon hundreds of envelopes containing cash and checks hidden in a wall. The money is believed to have been stolen from the church's safe seven years ago in a burglary that robbed the megachurch of over $600,000. The robbery case went cold for seven years, but the church's insurance company was able to fully reimburse the stolen funds. However, it seemed that the thief was never caught and the stolen money was never recovered until Collie stumbled upon it while working on the bathroom wall. Collie immediately notified his supervisor and the authorities about his discovery rather than just pocketing the money and having nice dinners like all these scammers seem to enjoy doing. However, despite his honesty and good deed, Osteen didn't even acknowledge Collie. We guess the old saying is true. Virtue is its own reward. Fortunately for Cully, Crime Stoppers of Houston gave him an actual reward, in addition to the virtue thing, $20,000. It just goes to show that honesty really is the best policy. Unless you're sick, then health insurance is the best policy. And who knows, maybe Cully's newfound wealth will be enough to buy him a little recognition from Osteen. The church hasn't commented on the amount of money found in the wall, but we can only imagine the look on Osteen's face when he heard the news. It's not every day that someone finds a hidden stash of cash in a bathroom wall, and it's even rarer for that someone to be a plumber on a routine maintenance job. Osteen probably had the same expression he gives when he prays to Jesus for more money from his followers. The investigation into the 2014 burglary still isn't officially closed yet, but it seems that Cully's discovery may help provide some answers. John Cannon, a spokesman of the Houston Police Department, said that the cash, checks, and money orders found in the wall definitely do appear to be connected to the burglary. In the meantime, Cully is enjoying his newfound wealth and is no doubt grateful for the unexpected windfall. Number one, millions of yuan. Chinese police stumbled upon a hidden fortune of over 64 million yuan in cash while investigating a suspected fraud scam. The mind-boggling discovery was made during a raid on a flat in Jilin province, where officers found the staggering cash of money hidden behind a wall. The investigation began after the authorities received a tip-off about a fertilizing company called Shuang Fei, which was allegedly buying off the debts of individuals and small enterprises at a low price, but failing to repay them. Acting on this information, the when police set up a criminal investigation team and began tracking a man named Wei, the company's legal representative. After following Wei's movements and scrutinizing the company's cash flow, the police finally decided to raid the flat where they suspected the money was hidden. And they weren't disappointed. When they tore down the wall, they were greeted with an impressive sight. Millions upon millions of Chinese Yuan notes filling up the corners of the room and scattered haphazardly in the middle. In total, the police seized over 64 million Yuan, which is equivalent to roughly 9.2 million bucks. Wei and three other suspects were arrested and detained for further investigation. The news of the incredible discovery quickly spread on Chinese social media, with many users expressing shock and disbelief at the sheer amount of money involved. Some even joked that the authorities should have left a little bit for everyone else, while others wondered what on earth Wei and his accomplices could have been planning to do with all that cash. 
one thing is for certain, this is definitely not your average case of fraud. It's a tale of greed, deception, and hidden riches that would make even Scrooge McDuck envious. It sounds like this safe house was cracked. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section where you would hide $10 million in cash if you had to.